Do you fear an unbootable Linux system and not quite sure what to do when that happens? Well, there are some tools and some options, and today we are going to talk about a Linux distribution specifically designed to help you attempt to resolve these things without having to reinstall everything, and some tools to make it a little bit easier to do so. We're going to go ahead and have a look at these. Thanks for checking out this video from Switched to Linux. And today we are going to have a look at some rescue tools. So if you like this type of content, Linux content and other things like this, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Leave us a like and a comment down below to help with the algorithm. And with that, we're going to be talking about Rescue Tux and Super Grub Disk. So these are two separate tools developed by the same group, which are really designed as rescue, repair, and fix and boot utilities. So of course, of course, if you don't understand how Linux systems work, let's just do Linux systems for now. Of course, Mac and, and Windows operate under somewhat similar behaviors. There's a couple of different bootloaders. The most common one in Linux is Grub, and there's a few other ones, but Grub is the co most common one. And you have a either a disk partition specifically for booting or a part on your, your drive for booting, and then you will have either original legacy BIOS files or EFI files for a UEFI system. And you have a variety of different ways that you can get in. Now, if things are not marked and mapped properly, your system may not boot, even though every requirement to boot your system are there. There are ways around that. In fact, I did a video last year or so, maybe about 18 months ago or so, where I had a boot system that they basically the boot sector became un, uh, unusable on an encrypted system and I walked through the steps about what was required we had to get in there with a live key we had to do some uh, cleanup of the boot sector we had to reinstall grub reinstall the kernels and we were able to get the system working and that's certainly a doable thing but this tool has a single one button click that you can do to attempt to resolve the, all those issues without going Going through the the mess that I had to go through if only I knew this existed then although being as that my drive is encrypted it may or may not have helped in that particular case but it might actually I did see a few things related to encryption so we are going to go ahead and talk about how this works and the two separate tools. We're going to talk about Rescatux first, since I can do that right here through a virtual machine. But then the second application, which is your Super Grub Disk, I'm just going to show you what that looks like by booting into a system and capturing the video with a capture card. So let's go ahead and start looking at their website. This is over at supergrubdisk.org, and so you can check that out. I will have that website linked down below, and they have two separate distributions. We have the Rescue Tux, and we have the Super Grub Disk. And what these guys are going to do is allow you to boot into an ISO image or a, an image file and be able to either fix your system or boot into your system. You might have installed the Linux distribution perfectly fine, but didn't install Grub somewhere. This guy, when you boot it up, it will look for every possible place or somewhere to boot, and it will give you the option, which is kind of cool. So uh, we are going to look at the Rescutux first, which does have a lot more to do with uh, just fixing a lot of your uh, your known problems. And you get this giant menu, and it allows you to just do a lot of things. Uh, so, of course, we have help stuff. And then how you can fix your boot. You can change it UFI boot order. Of course, one of my most popular videos on this channel is how to manually fix these guys in the terminal, which works. This tool, you can click this button and just do it in a GUI if you want. So I mean, maybe I'm making some of my more popular videos obsolete, but uh, hey, whatever I can. You can check the UFI boot. You can create a new boot entry. You can look at the partition status. You can fake a Microsoft Windows UFI. You can hide Microsoft Windows. You can reinstall the Windows uh, boot partition. As far as Grub, you can restore Grub. You can update the Grub menus. You can check your Grub. And then under our file systems, 
Uh, we can uh, check the, make sure the file systems are working. This is cool here. If you have forgotten your admin password, you can actually go in here and change the password based on getting into the system, change the password, and then now you can get a log back in your system. So, you know, if you have a random Linux distribution floating around and you don't remember what the admin password is, you can get into it now. That's kind of neat. You can regenerate the sudoers file, which, of course, this is which users have access to the sudo list, which users can behave as a root account with the sudo command. You can reset a Windows password, and you can do an easy Windows admin. There's some Windows-specific tools here, restoring the Windows master boot record. That's what Windows uses instead of Grub. And there's a lot of other options in here. So uh, here's G uh, GPT Sync. Uh, we have some GPART tools, test disk. There's just a lot of extra tools. So what we actually want to do is I want to boot into this system so you get a chance to see what it looks like actually live, and then we will go ahead and have a look. And so let's go ahead and start in by jumping on over to the virtual machine. All right, so here we have our options. So we can do an auto, we can do an AMD, AMD fail safe. We have a 686, and then we have advanced options for hardware tools and memory diagnostics. I'm just going to go ahead and head on into it as a uh, automatic. So now we're logging in, and we have a setup wizard. Do we want to run the full wizard here? Default settings, yes. Run full wizard, no. I'm going to hit no. Uh, because this first allows me to change my monitor settings. That's nice. Now, my actual monitor settings, which is uh, 1080p, is not actually in the list. So we'll just kind of pick something else that's going to be somewhat close uh, that gives us somewhat of a full screen. So there you go. We have a little bit of black box around it, but that's perfectly fine. We'll go ahead and keep that. Do you want to change your language? Uh, no, I think our language is good and our keyboard layout, I believe, is good. And then do you want to keep running the VNC server? We're going to go ahead and hit no. And now it has been completed. So we're going to start up and it's going to test the system. So you can see here that it's basically running a test uh, to make sure everything is going to work. So you can see here that we are booted in BIOS, non-UEFI mode. That's probably, uh, of course, because we're in a virtual machine, that's what I have it set. I can set the virtual machine to go with uh, the UEFI mode as well. And it does tell us that UEFI mode secure boot mode is off. And obviously because we are in regular BIOS. So we can go ahead and start our application. So this is our rescue application here. Let me go ahead and full screen this so we can see it a little bit better. So of course we have the chat, the share log, and the help. So if you are needing help, you can hit that button to share the share the log. We have information about how everything runs. And then we just have a lot of different options. So of course I have a Linux distribution installed here. And since I'm on a virtual machine, I can basically play with things. And if I break something, that's no big deal. So here you can have your easy boot uh, fix. When you click the button over here, then it gives you the basic documentation, which is really nice and clear. You can see the partitions that you're going to choose. You can see which hard drives and what is actually going to work with. Now, um, here you can see there's errors. If Grub was installed, error, Grub was not installed. So I tell you what those are. Now we have a run button over here. You hit this guy run, and then it's going to uh, run your uh, your system, and then it's going to start with asking which uh, drive we're going to do. So this one is actually the one we have. This is running Storm OS, and this is the hard drive. And so over here, it uh, looks down, says UEFI devices order skipped. This is not a UEFI system because, of course, it's installed on a virtual machine. You can see that the Grub configuration was successfully in, um, updated. It makes a temporary FS tab. It goes ahead and fixes it. It does give us an error at the bottom. And let's see what this is. Not fully completed. And the reason it's telling us something not fully completed is because this is not a UFI system. So, uh, But overall, it is done. We go back to the menu, and then we can see um, what we have. Here's your update your Grub menus. So you can go ahead and do this. Choose where you want your uh, grub menus to go. And then here is the configuration. Of course, I think there's only one option. But you can go ahead and fix any of your systems. And here's your change your Linux password. So again, it tells us what we're doing. Hit your run button. 
and then it's going to probe for OSs. Here's your uh, your distribution. And now you choose which user you want to change your password for. That could get dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, of course. Storm is the main user, so I go ahead and hit this over here. And um, you can see that I can enter any password here. Let's do strong password. And, of course, you can see that it's right up here. It's doing exactly what we want. Hit OK. And there you go. It has actually now changed the password for the system. When I go back in and log back in, that's the password I need to use to get logged back into the system. So this allows us to do a lot of uh, different things. Here's your sudo's file. Of course, this is a list of the users which can behave as a uh, sudo user. And we're not going to run this one uh, just so I don't actually mess that up since I'm still testing it. As far as your Windows options, of course, we're not running Windows here, so I can't run any of those. But you can see that the tools on here are very, uh, very useful. Let me go ahead and log out of our system. And we're going to, let's go ahead and shut the system down. And then what I'm going to do is we will boot into that system. And then we're going to log in. We'll go ahead and start our main distro here. And then I'll show you that the password did actually change to strong password. So go ahead and hit the button here. We're going to go through our boot initialization. And now we have our login screen here. So let's just type in strong password. I wish I could actually show you what that is, but I can't. And now you can see that we are now able to log into this Linux distribution using the password that we changed with the live key. So yeah, that might be something somewhat frightening that we can do that, but uh, hey, we can do it, right? Uh, so that is the first of these tools. That is Rescue Tux. Now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to shut this whole system down. We're going to boot off of a uh, USB key that I have Rescue, uh, excuse me, I have Super Grub Disk on this one. I'm going to show you how that works on a live system. So we'll go ahead and jump on over to there next. All right, so here we have booted into our computer here. Now the SATA here, this is actually the Linux distribution that is on the hard drive, which is going to be a Linux Mint Debian edition. And then here we have the the ISO image here burnt onto a flash drive. I'm just going to go ahead and pull this guy up. And then here we can see that we are starting with uh, Super Grub Disk 2 and we have the ability now to select our languages. We can detect and boot our uh, detect and show the boot methods and then enable the grubs raid and lvm support enable all native disk drivers which is experimental there's some manual stuff and then extra grub functionality so we're going to go ahead and detect and show boot methods and what this is going to do is this is going to run through and search every type of boot method it's going to look for Mac boot methods, it's going to look for Windows boot methods, Linux boot methods, and then it's going to give us a list of various options. So no Windows, that's good. Windows has not infected my computer. There's free DOS, there's React OS, free BSD, Mac, there's EFI files, and then here's Linux partitions. And we get down to the very bottom, here's... Um, Let's see. So we should find. I, I maybe I didn't do the Linux Mint Debian Edition uh, EFI. I have no idea. <laughs> I installed it. Uh, here's uh, no grub files detected here, and then here is your hard disks. Here's an MS DOS one, MS DOS two. Here's uh, these. So I don't know if we, either of these are those. So there it is. So it booted into our main system. At least I hope that's what we did. Let's go ahead and let that guy run. I'm going to restart the system. We're going to jump back into that. All right, and we are back uh, after uh, shutting down the system and rebooting. So let me walk through a couple more things here. I went into the extra Grub2 functionality, how to look at this. And we can see uh, we have the option to mount encrypted volumes. We can enable LVM support and RAID support. 
we can enable all native disk drivers. This was did not work well for me. Um, it just got into a screen I couldn't get out of. I had to force the machine down and back up. We have the ability to search in floppy drives, CD-ROMs, and in Grub2 disk devices as well. These are all defaulted to off. So there's extra options there. This again is the option I would not recommend doing. This one here, actually, I turned this one on. Just click on this guy here and it will um, enable the RAID and LVM support. So then you wait a few seconds, and then when we go back into this, then it's going to rerun everything, this time looking for LVM. So the last time when we clicked the button and it booted into the system, that actually was just going back to that first drive. It wasn't actually booting off of the uh, a file it found. And the reason is I installed that Linux Mint under LVM. So I had to enable LVM, and that is actually what gave me the, the um, options to boot into it. So once this is done, once again, we're going to get the same menu again, but now we have some LVM options also. So here is our menu once again, and you can see still no infections by Windows. No MS-DOS, FreeDOS, ReactOS, no Macs. It says no EFIs here, but now when we have the... LVM, you can see that we have the LVM LMDE root. This is actually where it shows us the two options that we have. Of course, we have our original Linux kernel, and this is once I updated the system. So I can boot into either of these now, or what I did last time, here's another entry from Grub. This is the uh, LMDE6. So I had to enable the LVM in order to actually get those options to show up and then here's your advanced options and it will go through and it finds where all of these guys are so I can see what each of these are allowing me to literally get into anything now the last time I went right here which booted into the main system because that just said hey boot off of the first hard drive which is working right now if that was not working correctly indicating something went on here I could actually get into the system just by selecting one of these two options here and it would boot into this even if this is not the actual uh, file in the menu for booting into the system so I could boot into this get into the system and then I could run grub and fix my booting system so let me just go ahead and click that guy and you'll see that should ju jump us right back on over into the Linux Mint and that appears to be what it is doing so you can see there it's LMDE 6 fe which is exactly what I was anticipating it to be. So we were able to boot into this system which will boot into Linux Mint Debian Edition based off of what we did in our super grub disk. So this absolutely is working very well. A nice tool to keep around. I'd highly recommend keeping this around for uh, any of those issues that you might have. So there are some excellent tools you can use in order to keep your Linux systems up and running or just to keep around. And if you have an extra USB drive, you might throw each of these on a USB drive or maybe throw throw them both on a Ventoy drive that if you do run into any unexpected Linux booting issues, you can get into these guys and maybe possibly fix your problem without having to go more nuclear options. So there is our brief tools. Once again, the website where you can download these and the organization you can get more information is down below. You can go ahead and have a look at that link in the description. With that, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And I'll go ahead and leave you that fun video where I had to do all this manually to see what that's all about on my old Linux Mint system. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.